What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Blake. You're watching the Aqua Papa. If you're new here, you're probably really into this hobby as well as myself. And I put out a lot of content, so please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And if you like this video, please make sure you like the video. Today I'm gonna to be answering the question that is most asked in my comment section. And that question is, what do I do with my fish fry and or eggs? So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys what I personally do when it comes to my fry and eggs, when it comes to mouth brooders, egg layers, and live berries. start off with mouth brooders. What mouth brooders actually means is that they hold their eggs and their fry within their mouths, kind of like this fish you see right in the front. This is a red zebra cichlid. It's an African Imbuna species, and she is currently holding eggs in her mouth. For the most part, I truly believe that these fish can do it all on their own. They take pretty good care of their young, and if they are not safe, they tend to actually swallow them. But if you don't want to let the mother defend her own eggs, then you can always take the mother and move her into a separate holding tank, obviously with the same water that is inside of the aquarium that the mother is currently in. Or if the female fish that is holding the eggs is small enough, you can always buy one of the hang on the side net fry holders as well. There is one more method, but if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're not at this point in your hobby, you can strip the eggs from the female's mouth, which is basically you just open the female's mouth and let all the eggs fall out, and then you can hook them up to a tumbler. And what a tumbler does is it just bounces the eggs up and down so they're not just sitting still on the bottom. Personally, I find using either the fry net or a separate holding tank to be the most efficient and the easiest method of hatching those kind of eggs. Now let's talk about live bearers. I don't have any live bearers. I only have some egg scatterers. This is my Celestial Pearl Danio and Snail Tank. And by snail tank, I mean snail heaven, snail tower. And to be downright honest with you guys, I have zero experience with egg scatterers. Either way, live bearers are the easiest. You just wait until you see a baby swimming around and then you scoop it up and you put it in a fry net. Or in a separate holding tank that's only for the babies. Most live bearer species will eat their young, so you gotta separate it unless there's an abundance of places for those babies to hide. Then you should be all right. Egg layers are relatively easy as well. For the most part, they're gonna lay eggs on a flat surface. If you have discus or angelfish, they'll probably end up laying eggs on a leaf somewhere, but for the most part, egg layers will lay on rocks or like a piece of wood and sometimes even on the glass of the aquarium. Sometimes these fish are aggressive fish species and the easiest way to deal with this whole situation is to keep the pair that is breeding in their own aquarium. I don't want to say all because I'm not positive, so I will say most. Most of the egg laying species of fish will defend their own young and they can even do pretty good in community settings, but it's less stressful on the parents if they're by themselves. And again, I think the easiest way is to remove the eggs and put them into a separate aquarium. Eggs are adhesive based, so they do stick to whatever you put them into. Hopefully, whatever they laid the eggs on can just be picked up and transferred into the separate aquarium filled with the aquarium water that the eggs were already in. So if the object that the eggs were laid on can't be transferred into the new aquarium, then you're going to have to scrape the eggs off. Don't worry, I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but trust me, it's fine. Just keep the eggs wet with tank water. Don't let them dry out and just be really gentle and they'll scrape off. I almost forgot to tell you guys what you're going to need in that aquarium other than aquarium water that the eggs were already in. You're going to need a heater. If your tank was heated, you want to keep the temperature about the same. And you're going to need a air pump and a sponge filter so the babies can't get sucked up into the sponge filter because it's a sponge filter. Or if you have to use a hang on the back filter, you can always buy a sponge sleeve that goes over the intake for the hang on the back or canister filter. No matter if you use a sponge filter or one of the sleeves that goes over the intake on any of your other filters, the one thing you're going to want to do is make sure that the flow runs over the eggs. 
If you're using a bubble stone, you don't want the bubbles to hit the eggs. Just gently brush over them. That's all I do. That's the answer to the question. If you guys like this video, make sure you like the video and thanks for watching. I hope it helped out.